So you're playing with the Ouija board. Uh -huh. The Ouija board, the idea is it's not your hands moving the thing around, but it's demons, basically, it's moving the... All right. Did it work? So it's funny because my first encounter with the Ouija board was my mom used to have them as a prop for Halloween. No one played with it. It was just when Halloween parties and she'd just have the Ouija board there. It would just be a prop, right? And um, I, I think one of the first times I remember using it, and it wasn't like I did the, this like hundreds of times. It was maybe a handful of times, 70 times. And so the first time it worked was I was at a, a friend's house. It was, I think, like eighth grade summer or something, ninth grade, eighth grade summer. And there was a group of us at this, this girl's house. And so it was a group, like maybe five or six was playing it. And it starts to move. Now, you know, everyone's first reaction is, is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Everyone's, no, I, no, I swear, no, I promise, no. Everyone's denying it. I know it's not me. The thing starts to move. People start getting freaked out. I, and me, again, I'm, I'm challenging this stuff. I think it's a joke. Yeah. Because even though I think, like, oh, it really is moving on its own at this point. Now, but I'm, like, asking it stupid questions, you know? Like, mm -hmm. oh, if you're real, show your face, you know, and stuff like that. And so it starts to move, and people will start getting freaked out. So it was like me, and I think it was like two or three other girls and another guy. They said, and they, they start to say, one of them said, you have to ask it if you can leave. Like I heard, you know, you can't just, or I'll leave the door, door open. You have to ask if you're allowed to leave. So they said, can I leave? And it goes, yes. Can I leave? Yes. And so next thing I know, it's just me and this one girl. Hmm. And she says, can I leave? And it says, no. So she goes to try, and she's like, can I leave? No. And it goes, no, no. And she just freaked out and she just like, she just walked, like ran off. And I was sitting there and just laughing and-, and kept... So it wasn't you moving it. Mm -mm. And so you could say, well, maybe it's this girl just wants to, you know, spend more time with you. Yeah. You say, okay, I'm gonna move it to say no. Yeah. But she gets very freaked out and then she leaves. No, she, it was genuine fear. Like she was like, oh, oh my gosh, I said no, no. She, she just like freaked out and she left. So that was like the first time I saw something come from hmm. Um, and then years later, I played it. Back when I was getting really into the, the DMT, uh, I just I had one, and I was with one of my friends. And this guy was, you know, he was a very stoic kind of guy. He wasn't a type of guy to like get scared easily. Like me and him used to, you know, do all types of crazy stuff together. He wasn't the the type of guy to, to for one, to to play into it, and two, to get scared about stuff like this. It's just me and him, you know, and, we're, and, and we start playing. And like I said, I lived on the, the, that battlefield. And so we start asking a thing that starts moving. I didn't even need to ask. I knew it wasn't him. He knew it wasn't me. Hmm. It starts moving. So we're asking him multiple questions. And he's, I start asking him, like, well, when am I going to die? When? And it, it, gives me, it gives me a number. And it says from an overdose. It says 37 from an overdose. Then it's, and then it, he asked it. And it gave him a number. And it gave him, uh, it said, I think, like heart failure or something, heart, heart attack or something. To this day, that friend is scared. He he called me literally like last yeah. year. He said, he like he freaked out. He I mean that it, like and this is 2012, 2013. I mean this he to this day he's still afraid of that. He still thinks that's gonna happen. Yeah, of course. How old are you? I'm 30. Yeah. Are you scared? No, no, because I, I I think the blood broke the curse. So, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that it it would have happened. Hmm. I think that that was the intention. I think that was the plan for my life, maybe, you know? Um, but he's, I mean, he still thinks that, like, he's, he mm. called me actually like a year ago or something. He said, dude, I, I only have a, a year left if that, you know, like, he thinks it's going to mm. happen. Right, because demons can't read your mind. Demons are not God. Demons are not omniscient or anything like that. But they are pretty good observers of behavior. And so... Mm -hmm. based on the behavior that you were exhibiting for a yeah. long time, it may have been a perfectly reasonable inference to say, oh, yeah, you'll die at 37 from a drug overdose. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So why are you doing... Because people tell me this. They say, oh, yeah, I'd play with Ouija boards and crystals and weird astrology stuff, but it was all just kind of silly games. And I think, when I want to play a silly game, I play Monopoly. Yeah, why, yeah. Why, what, what is it about... What drew you to the Ouija board and all the occult stuff? I think just us as humans, we're, we're drawn to the taboo. Hmm. You know, I think hmm. it's part of our nature. Yeah. We like that mystery. That That's why people like horror movies and stuff. And it's like... And your inhibitions are already a little bit weakened because you're doing all this other crazy Yeah, thing. yeah. I was already... I liked that, that right. like, kind of that... I liked the demonic type of stuff. I was drawn to the dark stuff. Not, uh, you know, not in the sense of, hey, you know, devil with pitchfork and horns. But the, the stuff that made people uncomfortable. I wanted to go into the water that everyone else was like, I don't know, that's a little crazy. The secret... 
Yeah, yeah. And so that was, it was just something I did with like friends. I'd play the Ouija board. I, I started doing psychics. I started, you know, I went into mm. all that because of B Buddhism is already kind of branched. That's a, I would say those are branches of that. It's like yeah. all, that whole world kind of comes together. It's the same thinking. And so I started getting more into the, the cult. And so what was crazy is when I was um, about 20, 2012, I was doing a lot of psychedelics. I was doing a lot of heroin. I was in probably the worst place I had ever, one of the d darkest places in my life. And so I had this moment of like, I'm having encounters with light beings. They're, why am I not happy? <laughs> why am I still stuck? I can't stop doing heroin. I wanna kill myself and I'm, have, I'm thinking I'm enlightened. I would have a, a, a trip and for a week, I'd be the most enlightened. I think I was Gandhi. For the next week, I'm Gandhi, everybody. And then a week later, I want to kill myself. And so I'm starting to connect these dots. Like, this doesn't make sense. Like, why, why am I having these great experiences, but I can't ever bring back the, the fruit or what I thought was fruit. I can't ever bring it back to my life. And I can't find the power to overcome any of this, my obstacles. What did you think the light beings were? Did you think it was a figment of your imagination, you know, just a chemical product of the, of the drugs? Or did you think they were angels or something? So with, with acid and mushrooms, you don't typically, at least I never had visuals where like, oh, I'm seeing this thing just pop up. It's more like the walls will melt. Everything's a lot more vibrant. Um, but you know, you might, you could see something and it starts to look like something else. I had a time where like my dog turned dog turned green and his tongue was longer, stuff like that, right? Like, but like you know, like oh, this is reality. Still a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's like I knew it was reality. With the DMT, this was like full on. Like you're seeing a whole world just crack open in front of you. It's like going to Mars or something, right? Like right now, this room you know just turns into you know another realm, right? And it's like. So I'm experienced. So I knew I was hallucinating, but I also knew 100% this stuff is real. Whatever is in my room right now, these things are real, and they 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 would be light beings. So they're they're a human shape, but they are like um, they were colors. One was one was purple, one was orange, one was red. It's like a, a flaming light, but in a human shape body, right? So it's like a silhouette. And then um, the thing about them is that they would always um, speak peace, like we're here to help you. We're, you know, calm down, relax. We have your, you know, we have your back. <laughs> and the thing that was interesting, and I didn't pick it up at the time, but looking back, it literally was like, you know, when you're swimming in the ocean and you feel like that there's something maybe under yeah. you. It's like, you're enjoying the waves. It's fun, but you kind of like, <laughs> oh, there might be a shark. That's how it felt. It's like, <laughs> I kind of don't trust you guys, but I don't have a reason not to. You look pretty. You're giving me good information. You're clothed as an angel of light, you might yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, that's kind of where it was at. But um, it just never... And they gave you advice in the sense that calm down, it's okay. What, what would they tell you? Well, they would so like the one DMT experience I had, I had these three beings come in my room. I freaked out. I, I started to try to get up off the bed. But there was a bigger one. Like, so if I was laying down, it was like his legs were 10 feet tall. So the other ones I see in front of me dancing around and swirling. This one was ten, like ten feet tall legs. I couldn't even see the top of the the being, but his hands started going over me. And if you've seen Reiki, they go like this. Like they do, he was doing Reiki hand movements over me, and he was telling me telepathically, "Relax, we're here to help you." Right. And then a few minutes later, my door opened up by itself, and another one came in. And it was dragging my body. So I'm in my body. I'm watching this. My body gets dragged in the room, and they told me, "If you don't stop doing heroin." this is you. And because and, and, I used to get high in my bathroom. And so I, I knew they were saying like, you're going to overdose in this bathroom if you don't stop. Hmm. And so that's what I mean. Like they would tell me like, you need to be a better person. You need so, to. so what is that? Is it, it seems to me there's four options. Mm -hmm. It could be your subconscious. You, you knew, yeah. even as you're doing a bunch of dope, you know that this is bad for you and it's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. So it's your subconscious telling you that, like in a dream, say. Uh, or they're demons. The clothed as angels of light, as it says in the Bible, or they're angels, mm -hmm. or they're just some weird chemical hallucination, totally random, totally unaccounted for, totally meaningless, mm -hmm. which to me seems like the most ridiculous possibility of all. So which of the three is it? So I think the interesting thing is that if you talk to anybody that did psychedelics, 
I think everybody would agree they're all real. It's it's like yeah, it's everybody. Not just, it's not just your subconscious. It's not your imagination, your subconscious. I think there's times people think like your subconscious can create stuff that isn't really there. But those experiences are 100%. It's another dimension. It, it is the it, the veil is removed. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what gets manipulated because of our ignorance, you know. Um, and so, uh, and I'll give you an example. The first time I did the mushrooms, I, I started to climb up a radio tower. And then I got about 20 feet up and I saw, oh, what am I doing? I shouldn't be climbing a tower right now. I started to climb down. The, that inflicted a thought of fear where I started for some reason, because I was in the woods, I started thinking about the headless horseman. And I'm like, oh, the headless horseman's gonna get me. I started to hear, I started to, to uh, hear horse, horses come, right? So that was an a, a example of me thinking something. And right, and then it kind of... But I knew, oh, I'm just tripping. Yeah. You know, like, oh, this isn't real right now. And yeah. I went back in the car and I was fine. Because you hear that expression a lot. You're like, oh, man, that guy's tripping over there. Yeah. But obviously, where it comes from is like, you literally were tripping and you I were was. imagining something that wasn't there. Yeah, and I was imagining it. And I knew I was. But that, this was different than what was going on in your room. Way different. But so then, yeah. my, but my question is, it sounds like they're demons. <laughs> yeah. But they're saying, hey, don't kill yourself, get off the heroin, which seems like good advice. So yeah. then it seems like they're angels. Right, right. So what that's, is it? What are, what that's, are? The, that's the deception in it. And so I mm. think uh, Romans 6 talks about, it says, it, it says you're either a, a slave to sin or to righteousness. It says, look at the fruit of what's coming from this. And so I think that a lot of times we have to look like, what is the fruit that is coming from this? Like the, the, the fruit that was coming from this was not good in any sense for me. It, Even when they say get off the heroin, that's not good. Well, I guess because it didn't work. Because it didn't, there was no power there. So <laughs> yeah. it was, it's kind of like, right, right. I, and I always use this illustration of if I'm trying to kidnap somebody, I'm not going to say, you know, hey, I'm here to kill you, kid. Like, come in the car. It's like, here's some candy. Right. Hey, I want to get you down there. Here's $100. So they don't, if, if, if you look at like the, right. the state of Satan being the God of this world in a, in a fallen state, fallen angels having, uh, you know, secret knowledge and, and you know what I mean? Principalities and powers. Yeah, and all this stuff. They're not dumb. You know, yeah. and so they can give you stuff that looks good, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. And, well, yeah, we, I guess our imagination is just limited. We think, oh, those stupid little devils. We're so much smarter than them. Yeah. But, uh, no, they're pure intelligence. <laughs> you know, yeah, they're yeah. probably, probably uh, more intelligent than we are. In, oh, yeah. In many ways. 